What's going on, growers? It's James Brigioni coming to you live from Jersey. Today, I'm going to show you a simple yet powerful trick to get your tomatoes to toughen up and produce like never before. Let's go! What if there was something in your medicine cabinet? Something cheap, something you already have that could give your tomatoes a serious boost. What if it could help your plants fight off disease, handle stress better, and even improve production? Here are my tomato plants that I use this pretty wild technique on that I'm going to share with you. Look at the health of them. Look at the color and the vitality. We just had some wet, rainy weather here recently, yet my tomato plants still look healthy and happy. Over the last few weeks, these tomato plants have done nothing but grow, grow, grow. I feel like I head in to go to sleep, come back out the next morning, and the things are almost like doubled in size. It's pretty incredible. Nature never ceases to amaze me. I recently learned an unbelievable fact about tomatoes that got me excited to try out this idea. One thing about gardening that I absolutely love is that there's always something new. I've been gardening for 15 years now, and I've grown so many different kinds of tomatoes and so many different beautiful varieties, all different shapes and sizes. I thought that I knew a lot about this stuff, but it seems like every day I am humbled by the vastness and the wonder of nature, plants, and in this case, tomatoes. I learned that plants actually produce a natural defense compound when they're under stress, like when pests and disease strike. I thought, that, that's interesting. Is there potentially a way to trick or force the tomato plant to prematurely bolster their defenses and proactively set up for some oncoming attacks from pests or diseases? Well, the potential answer to my question was actually sitting in my medicine cabinet in my house. Here's what I did. 18 days ago on May 20th, I came out to check on my tomato plants. They were looking decent and the plants were really starting to hit that growth stage. When I got a bit closer, I noticed a few of the lower leaves on my tomatoes were having issues. You can see here and a little bit over here. Not ideal. When I noticed some discoloration in the leaves of my plants, I wanted to do something proactively to help the plants before the problem got worse. I didn't think it was a lack of nutrition because before even transplanting these out, I added some all-purpose fertilizer to the soil so I was confident that the soil had enough nutrition in it for these plants to perform well. Another thing I noticed was the leaves that were damaged or had some issues were the leaves that were on the ground in contact with the soil. Regardless, I wanted to do something to help my plants. Before spraying my plants with the defense solution, I figured it would be a good idea to go out and prune off the lower leaves that were either in contact with the soil or had signs of issues on them. I made sure to spray my pruners with isopropyl alcohol when going from plant to plant to avoid the chance of spreading disease around. I did the same thing with a single tomato plant I had growing up a stake. I sprayed the pruners and pruned off the lower leaves, just like this. Next, I grabbed some aspirin from the medicine cabinet. You're probably thinking, aspirin? James, what are you thinking? Well, this is actually what will trick our tomato plants to bolster their defenses. It's actually quite interesting and scientific. I'll get into it in further detail after I show you guys how I sprayed these tomato plants right here. I took my uncoated aspirin you want it to be uncoated for it to be effective. Grabbed one 325 milligram tablet, you can see here, and dropped it into a spoon, and then it crushed it up with another spoon into a powder. If you have a mortar and pestle, you can use that too, but the measuring spoon worked fine for me. You can see the crushed up aspirin right here. Then I got a cup, poured some water in, and dumped my crushed aspirin into the cup and mixed it up. This will help the aspirin dissolve faster. This way it can coat the leaves and be more effective. After that, I grabbed my sprayer and added a gallon of water to it. Then I took some basic dish soap, one that doesn't have fragrances and isn't a degreaser, and added a little bit to my sprayer. You don't need much. 
I did this because the dish soap will help to spread out the droplets and form a thin, even layer over the plant surface. This thin layer will actually allow the solution to stick better to the leaves, giving it enough time to be absorbed by those leaves. So essentially what this dish soap does is it allows better contact between the solution we made and the leaf surface. Next, I took my aspirin water solution and dumped it into my sprayer, then added a bit more water to the cup to make sure I got all the aspirin, and shook the sprayer for a few seconds to mix it all up. I pumped the sprayer and then sprayed it on the ground until I saw some bubbles from the soap, and I knew I was ready to spray my plants. I first went out and sprayed the solution on a single plant, coating the top and underside of the leaves. Here is the plant a little bit later. The solution is beginning to be absorbed by the leaves. Whenever you're using a new type of spray in your garden, you first want to test it on one plant, leave that plant for 24 hours, then come back out and make sure that there were no negative side effects. Another thing is, when you're spraying your plants, you don't want to do it midday when the sun is out because if it's a hot day, the sun's scorching and your leaves are wet, that can actually burn your plants. Another thing is, when you're using this spray, you want to make sure that the leaves of your plants are dry because we want this solution to be absorbed by the leaves. We don't want it to just wash off the leaves. The next day, I went out and sprayed this whole row of tomatoes. I made sure to spray both the top sides and the undersides of the leaves. You can see the plants here with the solution on them. It was a perfect day to do it. It was not super sunny. It's been 18 days since I sprayed these plants and I'm very happy with how well they're growing. And I'm actually quite surprised with how effective this spray seems to be. Although there are some studies to back it up, which we'll get into. Today I'm going to spray them again later in the evening because the suggested cadence to spray them is every two weeks. So I'm about four days behind. I also noticed if you come down here that a few of the leaves are starting to get some issues, which makes me think, yeah, I should have sprayed these a few days ago. You can see some discoloration right here. That's all right. You may have noticed when we were looking at them before, some of this right here. This isn't a disease issue or anything. This is just the droppings from a bird because they sit on my trellis above. When it comes down to it though, this is just fertilizer. This row of tomatoes right here, I didn't spray with that aspirin spray. And look at the difference. We've got some disease issues on this leaf here, but it's not just one plant. The plant next to it has some issues you'll notice here. And even as we go down this way. So even just to contrast between the two different rows, the row where I sprayed the aspirin, the plants seem to be doing a lot better. Now, was it worth it? Does it actually work? Is it organic and should you try it? After one round of spray, my tomatoes didn't like double in size overnight, but their vibrant color and their resilience after the heavy rains suggests that the aspirin is helping. And this is actually backed up by a few studies. I'll admit, when I first heard about this, I definitely had my doubts, but I went on the computer, did some research, and actually found some really interesting information. First, I found a study done by the University of Rhode Island, which found spraying your tomato plants with aspirin actually helps the plants fight off diseases like blight. I found an additional study done in 2017 and published in the frontiers of plant science. Within that study, it cited that using salicylic acid on your tomato plants or a number of different plants actually helps improve their overall heat and drought tolerance while also improving fruit quality. Then I found a third study done in 2010 published in the Journal of Plant Physiology which states and cites a 10 to 20 percent increase in yield when using the salicylic acid on the plants done under controlled conditions. So what's going on here and why does this work? Well, salicylic acid is a natural hormone found in plants that triggers a sort of defense mechanism for the plants. Essentially, it helps the plants to defend themselves against environmental stressors like heat or drought or even pests and disease. This natural compound is found in plants like it's even found in willow bark. And what it does is it kind of triggers within the plant something known as systemic acquired resistance. It kind of just like 
flips a switch where the plant decides to really toughen itself up and bolsters it def its defenses to be able to fight off things like fungi and blight. The reason aspirin works like salicylic acid in your tomato plants is because the ingredient in aspirin is acetyl salicylic acid. So it's like a cousin of the salicylic acid. When we take our aspirin, we dissolve it in water and then spray it on our plants. As it goes into the plant, the plant can sort of recognize that as salicylic acid. And as we know, the salicylic acid is a plant hormone that the plant naturally produces to help bolster its defenses. So when we add that aspirin spray, we're almost like tricking the plant to add that salicylic acid because it kind of gets added from our aspirin to the plant. What this does is it triggers that systemic acquired resistance. That tells your plant, you know, you better toughen up, bud. Things are happening. The bugs might be coming, the pests might be coming, the heat might be coming, the drought might be coming. So when we kind of trick the plants to get into that systemic acquired resistance, that really helps the defense of them. The reason this works so well is because the acetyl salicylic acid, which is found in the aspirin, it's so close, I guess, like chemically to the salicylic acid that it can kind of just like slot into the, into the natural spot of the tomato plant it like chemically in there and then it kind of just like fits into that defense pathways so it's almost like we're creating the salicylic acid for those tomato plants instead of like it naturally happening by itself once the pests and disease come so it's like proactively prepping that plant by adding some of our own salicylic acid well that was a lot of words and some scientific jargon simply to say that using the aspirin it helps the plants to bolster its defenses against things like pests, disease, heat, drought, and any kind of other environmental stressors like that. You might be thinking, is this organic? Well, it's synthetic and it's made in a lab, so I wouldn't consider it organic, but it isn't harmful to any beneficial insects, to the soil, or to people. I mean, we take aspirin. I mean, I've taken aspirin before. I'm still here. So there aren't really that many negative side effects unless you use too much of it. So like I mentioned earlier, the cadence is about every two weeks. You don't want to spray this on your plants every day and you don't want to add too much aspirin to your plants. So the recommended dosage is about 300 to 500 milligrams of aspirin per gallon. That's what I would suggest doing. I also would suggest what I did earlier and just spray one plant at a time, give it about 24 hours, make sure the plant's okay. And then you could spray a larger amount of plants. You don't want to just spray you know, all the plants at once and then maybe your dosage was off or something was off and it forms an issue. I think that this was a cool experiment. It was a fun one. I, I definitely think that it worked for me, especially because I'm seeing some healthier plants on this row of tomatoes compared to the other row behind it. Like I showed you earlier though, there were a few spots where there's still some disease issues that seem to be arising on these plants, but they're better than the ones next to it. And I also didn't stay on top of the two week regimen of spraying. I'm going to spray these tonight and then Further in the future, I'll update you guys again on how well this worked for me personally, but we can't deny the fact that there were some studies done that have proved the efficacy of this. So even though I had my doubts at first, when I actually put it into practice and I'm actually trying it, I don't have as many doubts. And then with also those backed up studies, I think, I mean, it's, it, I, I, you can't really deny that it at least might help a little bit. I think it's so interesting how we can kind of trick plants to, you know, to switch how they grow or how they defend themselves just by making a few little changes. That's one thing I love about gardening so much. It's so hands-on and you, you could just do little tweaks that can make big differences. So I think by continually to spray these, now that we're heading into the warmer season when some of the fungal issues really get bad, when the heat comes and the rain comes, it's gonna be fun to see how well this works and to just continue along with this uh, experiment and don't worry i'll keep you guys updated on the progress you guys might notice i've got a new shirt i'm wearing today we just dropped some new merch this is the i'd rather be gardening shirt i love it so much with a raised bed right there i think it came out fantastic um, the idea came from you know just being at the food store or being anywhere doing something and then just thinking like man I'd rather be gardening. I mean, that happens to me often. If you guys like the shirt, let me know down in the comments. And if you want, we're selling them over at teamgrow.us now. If you want to grab one, go ahead. That's today's video, growers. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. 
This turned out to be a super fun and an informative video for me. I learned a lot in this process. When I first saw that some people were saying you could use aspirin in your tomatoes, I was thinking that's gotta be another one of those like useless hacks where people are just trying to do it to get clicks or people are just like, I don't know, trying some goofy stuff. But I had to take a step back. I had to look at, look at it from you know, a different set of eyes and not try to look at it like with a prejudging mindset. When I did, I did my research and then I actually tried it in the garden. I was surprised with the results. That's why I love making these kinds of videos and that's why I like just, you know, trying to clear my mind and not trying to go into things with preconceived notions or preconceived ideas of how it should work or how it could work or to just kind of like let nature show me and try to stop using this stupid human brain to figure everything out before I try it. Overall, I had a really fun time with it. I would love to hear down in the comments, have you guys ever tried this before? If you have, what have your results been? I only tried it with the one spray so far, but I found that it was working well. And then after my research, I also found that it was proven to work well. Then I was like, you know what? I need to get this video out as soon as possible. The original idea was to post this video in like the fall after I had more time to gather all the you know, information of how well everything grew and how effective it was. But when I saw how immediately effective it was and how well my plants, plants were going, growing, I felt like it was something that I wanted to share with all of you so you could try it out this season if you want. If you live around here in zone 7A where I am, New Jersey, or even maybe further north, you still have plenty of time to try this out before a lot of the bad diseases come, before the drought comes, and before you know, that wicked heat comes that's showing up already. You guys are probably noticing I'm sweating a little bit. The heat is here. The New, New Jersey humidity is especially here. And it doesn't make being in the garden less fun. It just makes it a little more interesting. I had a blast in this video. I hope you guys got some true value out of it. That's the reason we're here. I want to let you guys know that you need to check out the community over at teamgrow.us where we have close to, might even be at, 2,000 members now on there. All growers, all people interested in taking back control of their own food, which then helps them get a little more control of their lives. And we all have a common mission where we're trying to grow a better future together. And you know what? We're helping one another do that. I think it's powerful. I think it's a lot of fun. That's why you guys gotta check it out. It's free to join, get on there, throw some posts up, give some suggestions to other people, and let's all come together as a true team to really build and grow a better future. I also wanted to send a thank you to not a channel member, someone that I've just spoke to recently on the phone, Karen Jones. You know who you are. It was nice talking to you. Thanks for being a part of the team. Thanks for being a consistent subscriber for, what was it say, maybe five, six years. We appreciate you. So everyone who's watching, can you just say what's up to Karen and then just uh, tell her, um, you know, we appreciate her and we encourage her to keep growing because she's a true gardener and, you know, we appreciate you, Karen. Thanks for being a part of the team. Overall, I had a blast out here. The tour is coming soon. The harvests are actually ready. Some of those cabbages, so dense. Cherries, super ripe. I can't wait to bring you guys along for a harvest video. I'll be back to you with another one real soon. We out.